How many times have you heard whiskey drinkers correct someone with no, I drink bourbon or no, this is scotch or no, I, I drink single malt. Today, I'm gonna dive into one of the most polarizing of the whiskey arguments, bourbon versus scotch. Hey guys, I'm Nath Martin, the Whiskey Scribe. I'm a whiskey enthusiast and I love all things whiskey. And as much as I'm normally a single malt drinker, bourbon is still a form of whiskey and I've been trying to explore it more. So whether you consider yourself a whiskey connoisseur or you're just trying to understand more about whiskey, let's explore it all together. If you want to see more from me, consider subscribing. I put up new videos every week. You can also follow me over on Instagram. Now, bourbon and scotch are both whiskies in that they're both grain based, fermented, distilled, and then aged in wood. So they're from the same flavoursome family that's just grown apart and bourbon has kind of branched out on its own. So scotch refers to whiskey that's made in Scotland. And there are a number of rules that you have to follow in order to make a scotch whiskey. And since 1933, some of the legal requirements for this have included, so it has to be made in Scotland, it has to be made from whole grains of cereals, and it has to be aged in wood for a minimum of three years. Now, because of the allowance for various grains in order to be called Scotch, I'm going to focus on single malt whiskey here. Single malt is the more popular of the Scottish styles, especially when you're talking about premium bottlings. So to be called a single malt whiskey, it means that the whiskey must be made from malted barley from a single distillery. So for this video, I'll be comparing single malt with bourbon. And if you want to know more about these various definitions of whiskey, you can check out this video here. Now, although bourbon is often thought of as just American whiskey, there's a lot more to it than that. And there are other forms of American whiskey as well. But to be called bourbon, it has to be made in the US. Now, although bourbon was first made in Bourbon County of Kentucky, it's not like sherry or champagne in that it do, it's not region specific. So you could make bourbon anywhere throughout the US and that includes US territories. So they even make bourbon up in Alaska and if you were to start a distillery in Puerto Rico or Guam, you could call it bourbon. In fact, theoretically, you could probably even set up a distillery in a US embassy and still call it bourbon, so long as you followed the rest of these rules. So bourbon has to be made from a grain mash that's at least 51% corn. Now the rest of the grains can be malted barley, wheat, or even bloody quinoa. I don't know why you would though, but more than half of it has to be corn. And there is a reason for this. So when European immigrants first migrated to Kentucky, most of them were German, Irish, or Scottish immigrants. And the best crops that they could grow was corn. It was native to the area. It just grew better in America. And it meant that farmers would often have enough excess grain that they would have enough left over to distill, to make spirits that they could then sell in the winter months. Now, although their production method was mostly Irish, because they were using corn, it produced a more sweeter characteristic that became kind of iconic for that style of whiskey, which other whiskey makers then started to copy by using corn. So it wasn't until 1935 that US federal regulations actually mandated that to be called bourbon, it had to be made from a minimum of 51% corn in the mash bill. And this was simply to maintain that consistency between the flavor of the whiskey and the name that it was given. Also, Bourbon must be aged in virgin charred oak barrels. Now virgin just means that it hasn't been used before. And although there's nothing that specifies what type of oak, most American distilleries use white oak. But the fact that it has to be virgin is what's so unique to bourbon and Tennessee whiskey, which I might cover on another day. But distilleries in Scotland, Ireland, Australia, in fact, anywhere around the world making whiskey, they don't have that same restriction. They can use virgin oak or they can put their whiskey into barrels that have been used for something else. So why does bourbon have to use virgin oak? Now it started with the fact that there was a plentiful supply of white oak in Kentucky. So they would make the barrels out of white oak and ship them in those barrels out to the destination. But it was cheaper for them to make a new barrel than it was to actually ship those previously used barrels back into Kentucky. And so for that reason, bourbon was always placed into virgin oak. As a result, the flavor that came from the bourbon being aged in that virgin oak became another distinctive characteristic of bourbon. So it was protected by law. It was also to protect the American cooperages. Now, cooperages, coopers, 
were the people who made the wooden barrels. So coopers were really skilled at steaming and bending the wooden staves of the barrels, using these metal rings to put it together in a way that made a barrel that didn't leak, but it also didn't use any glues or nails or anything like that, which would also impart flavors onto the, onto the whiskey. So it was a very specific profession, and this law made sure that there was always gonna be a market for those coopers. Now, virgin white oak imparts quite a lot of tannins and lactones and other compounds onto the whiskey. While there are some Scottish distilleries that do use virgin oak sparingly, too much virgin oak on single malt can impart too many of those tannins. They can make it too tanniny. Tanniny, is tanniny a word? But because of the natural sweetness of the corn-based bourbon whiskey, it can handle those compounds better. In fact, it even helps balance out and age the whiskey faster. Which brings me to the next point. Unlike single malt, there's not actually a minimum aging time for bourbon. Now, if you wanted to call your bourbon straight bourbon, it would need to be aged for at least two years. And if you wanted to display bottled in bond on the bottle, it would have to be aged for at least four years. But there's no minimum aging time for bourbon. Essentially, distilleries can call their spirit bourbon after it's spent a year in virgin oak barrels and possibly even less than that. With all those differences between the making of bourbon and single malt, why is it that whiskey drinkers usually consider themselves to be a bourbon or a single malt drinker? What is the actual difference for the end consumer? Bourbon, no matter who makes it and how, tends to have sweet, mellow sort of characteristics. So it usually has flavors like caramel, oak, uh, cinnamon, and nutmeg. And this is because the biggest influences on flavor, being mostly corn-based and aged in virgin oak, are a standard requirement. Meanwhile, single malt has a lot more flexibility in terms of the barrels in which it can be aged. So while the malted barley grains don't impart anywhere near as much sweetness as the corn, it allows the whiskey to take on more of the characteristics from the barrels that have previously held other liquids. So we're talking about things like wine and port, sherry, beer, even maple syrup. I said other liquids, I didn't say it had to be alcohol. So there are sweeter single malts out there that have been aged in things like port or sherry casks. But interestingly enough, there are a lot of Scottish single malts that have been aged in ex-bourbon barrels. Now this is partially because the bourbon industry has a constant supply of once used barrels because they can't use them a second time and a second hand barrel is always gonna be a little bit cheaper than a brand new barrel. But because ex-bourbon barrels have already been used once, all of those tannins and really abrupt characteristics that come from the new wood characteristics that actually balance quite well with the sweetness of corn-based whiskey, they've already been extracted by that bourbon aging. So then putting single malt into those barrels allows that whiskey to age slowly, since single malt has to be aged for a minimum of three years, and not take on the biggest onslaught of those new oak characteristics. In fact, most whiskey makers in Scotland actually consider whiskey that's been aged in ex-bourbon barrels to be the truest expression of their spirit. This is because it allows the actual whiskey itself to shine rather than the flavors that come from things like the wine or port or sherry that's been previously in the barrel, or that those really, really abrupt new wood characteristics. So typical single malt flavors are things like malt, which sort of comes across as biscuity, fruit or nuts, spices, and some light wood notes because it's spent more time in the barrel. In the case of peated whiskies, you might get a bit of smoke, and sometimes with island or coastal distilleries, you get a little bit of a maritime saltiness from that sea air coming into the barrel. So you get even more variations of flavor when you start looking at different barreling. But because bourbon is sweet and generally mellow, it's much more approachable, whereas single malt whiskey can sometimes be referred to as a bit of a acquired taste. Now my personal opinion is that if you like bourbon, there are single malt whiskies out there that you would like. So try and lean towards things that have been aged in sherry or port, that might be about five to 12 years of age and about 46% ABV and avoid anything peated. These whiskies will be softened by their time in the barrel and take on some sweetness from what was previously in the barrel. Because if you're used to drinking something like Buffalo Trace, which is known for flavors like brown sugar, toffee, dark berries, things like that, and your first introduction to a single malt is a 12 year old Colilla, which is dry, medicinal, salty, and smoky, you're gonna think that you don't like single malt whiskey. But my personal recommendation, if you're gonna go from bourbon to single malt, is to try the Balvini Double Wood 12 Year Old. Now this is a whiskey that has been aged in bourbon casks, Oloroso Sherry, and it's been aged for 12 years. 
So it carries some vanilla notes from those bourbon casks. You've got some wonderful sweetness that comes across from the sherry aging. And that 12 years really softens it, makes it a much more approachable whiskey for somebody who's used to bourbon. So the thing to remember about these whiskey names of and country of origin requirements is they only matter if you want to actually use the specific name. So while only corn-based whiskies that have been aged in virgin oak and made in America can be called bourbon, there are distilleries in other countries that are making what is essentially bourbon, but they just can't use that name. For example, in Western Australia, there is Whippersnapper Distillery. Now this is a distillery that makes things like rye-based whiskies, wheat, even quinoa. Why? But they also make corn-based whiskies, like their Upshot Red Corn, which is made from 100% corn. It's been aged for two years in virgin American oak barrels. And whilst if it was made in America, it would be called bourbon, but it can't because it was made in Australia, it did just win world's best corn whiskey in the 2023 World Whiskey Awards. But single malt whiskey is not exclusively Scottish either. And there are plenty of distilleries making single malt whiskey to Scottish requirements, popping up in countries like Australia, India, Taiwan, and even Israel. And there are also single malt distilleries in the United States. So I'm talking about distilleries like Westland in Washington, Falcones in Texas, and Westwood in Portland. In fact, even Jack Daniels has got a single malt whiskey on the market. And while many Americans are discovering single malt, some are going the other way, like Rabbit Hole Distillery, which was started by somebody who was a Scotch drinker, discovered bourbon, and fell in love with it so much that he started making it. Now, although Rabbit Hole is not available in Australia, I have managed to get my hand on a few samples. So I will be tasting that and reviewing it next week. But with all this, it really just does come down to personal taste. There's no one style of whiskey that's better than the other, it just comes down to what you like. And the beauty of these new single malt distilleries opening up in the US, if you're over there and branching out from bourbon, you can support local distilleries and still explore what single malt has to offer. Now, I'm still new to quality bourbon and I'm gonna keep exploring it. So if you wanna see the rabbit hole whiskey review next week, hit subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you've got any suggestions of other whiskeys or types of whiskey that I should try, please let me know in the comments below. But for now, enjoy what's in your glass and slange.